Tonight, very briefly, I'm going to be talking on the topic, higher heights, greater glory. Let's say it together. Higher heights, greater glory. Say it out loud. Higher heights, greater glory. Say it out again. Convince yourself. Higher heights, greater glory. Hallelujah. And the anchor scripture is Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 30. Let's read out loud together from the screen. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Verse 29. And for God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son. So that his son will be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And verse 30. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Somebody is set for glory tonight. If you are that person, let me hear your loud amen. Now you will agree with me that as a church in the year 2017, we experience a lot of the goodness of God. Everything worked out perfectly for us in 2017. Any witness in the house? Any witness in the house? If you are a witness like uh, that wonderful daughter of Zion made a loud noise, make a loud noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please understand, it is not as if 2017 we did not face challenges. We face some very good situation and some not so good situation, but all of it worked out the perfect will of God for us. Someone was still sharing a testimony this morning and he said, well, I desired it in a particular way, but somehow the Lord just arranged something else for me. I went for a particular type of job, but as soon as I got there, the whole arrangement changed. How many of us are witness? We're here this morning. Now, so he said, as he got to that company, the situation changed. And then the job they eventually got... It's the one where there is no downtime. Praise God. That's what is happening for you. So for us as a church, all the challenges, all the trials, the very good, the not so good, all of it worked together for our good. So we can safely conclude that God came to us as individuals and as a church. He came to us. How many is a witness? Praise God. Now I want to talk on the word glory. What is glory? In Greek, it means kabod. Sorry, in Hebrew it means kabod, and in Greek it means doxa. You remember Samuel's, uh, uh, Eli's daughter-in-law that said, no, the glory has departed from Israel. Ichabod. Now, what that means is the power of God. What is glory? I want to share with us. Very quickly, it means abundance. Say with me, abundance. abundance. It means wealth. It means treasure. It means honor. It means the dignity of God. The splendor, the brightness and the majesty of God. So, it means abundance. It means life. It means peace. It means joy. It means the majesty of God. So, as, a, as an individual, in this year, 2018, that we're going to step into the glory, the majesty, the splendor, the abundance, the beauty, the honor, the dignity of God shall be accompanying you. I didn't hear someone's amen. Now, Moses, sometime, because he realized what glory meant, he said, show me thy glory. Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18 and 19. And the Bible says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And in verse 9, 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness to pass before thee. So glory brings goodness. So in this year 2018, all the goodness of the Lord shall be passing in front of you. Show me thy glory. The goodness came. What else? It says, pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And he will be gracious to whom I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. So glory brings graciousness. In this year 2018, as you step into it, the graciousness, the splendor, the majesty of God, the name of the Lord shall be going ahead of you. It shall be coming behind you. It shall be accompanying you on every side. In the name of Jesus. 
And he said, I'll be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Now, what does glory represent? To a father, every father wants their sons and their daughters to be successful. What does glory represent to us as men? So to a father, glory means to see your children succeed in life the way you planned it. They go to school, get good grades, graduate from the first, second, and third degrees with excellent grades, get a fantastic job, get married to an excellent spouse, raise a good family, remain happy and fulfilled, and they love the Lord. Is that what glory means to you? That's what glory means to father. To mothers is the same thing. But in addition, some mother will say, you know what? I always bring my grandchildren around me. So they bring the grandchildren and then your sons and daughters are always surrounding you. They are there, you know, saying, sharing the testimonies of the faithfulness of God. And then, then you will see mothers, they begin to dance and say, hey, my daughter, my son, he just finished from the, from the, from the law school. Praise God. That's what glory means. It means you are proud of their achievements. It means everything in your heart that you desire to see about your children all come to pass. How many is a witness? That's what glory means to parents. Now, to a son, to a daughter, what is glory? Get good grace, finish in time, get Go to get a good job, you know, settle down, you know, before be called for a thing, it's there, and your life is going the way that you planned it. That's what glory means to an individual. What about to our father? I realize to God, if we, because God always compares himself to humans, at one time he said, He said, if a mother forgets a suckling. He said a mother will not forget a suckling child that she, will, that she will not remember the child of her womb. He said they may, but I will not. So to our father, your father and my father, this is what glory represents. It means to commune with you and I in sweet fellowship and see us succeed and make it through life. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, according as his divine power. Let's read it together. 2 Peter 1 3, according as his divine power has given unto us some things. No, shout it loud. All All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Listen to what that means. It means God called you to glory. In other words, he wants to see you succeed. And everything that you need to make you succeed, he releases them to you. Somebody here in the year 2018, everything that you need to make your life a huge success. The God that we serve, a joy overflow, who decorated us with glory and beauty in 2017, will do much more in 2018. In the name of Jesus. Now, but it takes a process. Look at the process in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, 8 to 30. In verse 29, the Bible says, He knew us before we were formed. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. He was talking about Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, before you were formed in the womb, I knew thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the people. So before you were born, before you were formed, before you begin to choose a career, everything that you need to succeed in life and be a huge success according as you desire for your children, God already made it happen. God already made it happen. So he knew us before we were formed. And two, he predestinates us according to Romans chapter 8 verse 29. What does predestinate mean? It means he chose us. Say, I'm chosen. chosen. Say it out loud. I am chosen. chosen. The scripture tells us in the book of 1 Peter. He said, 1 Peter 2, 8 and 9. He said, ye are a chosen generation. Ye are a royal priesthood. A peculiar people called to show forth the glory of him who called you 
out of darkness into his marvelous light. So before you were formed, you were chosen. So never you see yourself as a mistake. That's what the devil wants to magnify in your head. If I am chosen, why is all this happening? Shut up. Close your mouth. Agree with the purpose and plan of God for your life. And then in verse 30, when he chose us, what did he choose us to do? He chose us to be like his son. Who is the firstborn? Who is our brother? The other day I showed to us our brother and someone was saying, is this your elder brother or is this your, what's going on? I said, well, it's my younger brother. As a matter of fact, he's the fourth in the family. I'm the first. So you can imagine that this, this young boy, you know, is shining to the glory of God. I know that's why this girl loves everything about this boy. Praise God. Okay, so let's go on. So he chose us to be conformed to his son. In other words, when he made you, he put an image of Jesus. He says, see you right now. But this is who I want you to be. So gradually, you begin to look like Jesus. Only when you look unto Jesus. That's why the Bible says, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What you look at is what you look like. I don't know who is speaking into your life. But if you focus on Jesus and make him your express image, the more you look at him, the more you look like him. Somebody here in the year 2018, as you begin to focus on Jesus, you will begin to look like him. The Bible says, then in verse 30, he called us. He made us look like Jesus. Then he called us and said, come. He called us to come to him. So as long as we remain in Christ, as long as we do what? You remain in Christ, nothing can change that formation onto the image of Jesus. Nothing. No devil, no affliction. In the year 2018, as you focus on Jesus, I see you conform to his express image in the name of Jesus. So say out loud, Satan, take your hands off my life. I know who I look like. So begin to focus and gaze on him. And the more you gaze on him, the more like him you become. Praise God. Verse 30 also. It says, and having chosen us, he gave us right standing with himself. So if you are standing right with God, where is condemnation coming from? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Now, not yesterday. Now, there is no condemnation to those who are in what? In Christ Jesus. So no condemnation for you. You have a right standing. King James Version call it justified. And the end product, when we have been justified, I may still be in the process. Some are in the process of still conforming. But he said the end result is that you'll be glorified. And you remember the definition of glory? He said the majesty of God, the beauty of God, his splendor, his brightness, his express image. That's who you are. In the year ahead of you in 2018, that's what God will do to you. In verse 30, he specifically says, he gave them his glory. He did what? He gave them his glory. Now, please understand, just very quickly, glory is in levels. Glory is in level. And I talk about three levels quickly. There are two levels of glory. One is called the celestial and the terrestrial. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 40 gives us more details. It said there are also t- celestial bodies and there are bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Which image are you reflecting? Terrestrial or celestial? 
two levels of glory. Another level of glory. There are three levels of, levels of glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41, it said there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differed from one, from one, from another star in glory. So there is a glory of the sun. There is a glory of the moon. There is a glory of the star. Now, which one do you want to reflect? I want to reflect the glory of the sun. I want to reflect. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, God made two great, great lights. The, he made the bigger light to rule the day and the small, lesser light to rule the night. The glory of the sun is the highest glory. In the year 2018, I see the glory of God sit upon you like the sun. The sun has no hiding place. As a matter of fact, if you read, I think it's in Psalm 19, it was talking, describing the glory of sun. He said, he comes out like a man ready to run a race. He said, his lines are gone all through the earth. There, you can't hide from the sun, no matter who you are. Praise God. That is the glory that the Lord will give to you. And there's a third level of glory. What is multiple levels of glory? Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face, as in a glass... The, behold, the glory of God are changed into that same image from glory to glory. So in the year 2018, the Lord will move you from one level of glory to another. Yeah. Wherever you are right now is the least that you'll be. Yeah. But let me show us one secret, one responsibility, one major responsibility that you and I have. Now, verse 28 of Romans chapter 8 tells us something. In verse 28 of Romans chapter 8, it says, For we know. That God causes everything to work together for those who love God. Your love must be in place. You must show to God, Lord, I love you. When your love is in place, then God goes ahead and makes everything to work for you. Shall we all rise up right now?